Good morning everybody, how are you today? Pretty good here and welcome back to the channel. That's right, today let's talk about the Toyota Tacoma TRD Pro Style Grill Insert. You know, I get a lot of questions on the channel about this thing. People, people that are concerned about problems, or will it fit, or issues, or what about the camera, or what about the insert, this little garnish down here. Um, all kinds of crazy things, knockoffs, genuine OEM parts, I mean, just all kinds of stuff. So I thought I'd answer some of those questions uh, in a video. So first of all, I do have the genuine Toyota TRD Pro Style, or Pro, it's not style, it is the TRD Pro uh, grill insert. Now, some of you are going to ask, after I get to the rest of this video, why I, why I have this? You know, why didn't I go knockoff? Well, there's one big reason, and it's right here. It's actually a little reason. It's this camera. I was concerned, not knowing anything about the, the innards of this insert, as to whether or not this would fit on the uh, knockoffs and uh, and what I would do with it uh, if I had the knockoff grill that didn't come with this area for the camera built in. My mistake, after tearing the thing out and looking at the camera, I had to adapt this to fit inside this OEM grill anyway. Apparently Toyota has a different camera um, bracket for the TRD Pro as opposed to getting this in a TRD off-road. It's the only thing I can think because it did come with the housing here for the camera, but the bracket in it did not fit. I had to cut the bracket to make it fit in here and do it my own way. And I used a little bit of double-sided tape too, just to secure things. Now, let me tell you, you know, after you do these things, you gain a little bit of knowledge, right? This is a third gen Tacoma, and I believe, from my experience with this, that any third gen TRD Pro style grill insert will work. The prongs are good, they're all in the same position. Toyota didn't change any of that in this grill, you know, the surround here. So it's not a problem. So what do you do with the camera then? Well, you have a couple of options actually. You could mount it up on top and maybe uh, cut a couple of these little plastic prong areas in here, just right up against where the camera would fit and then double side tape it right up here on top. It will work just as well. Uh, with the double sided tapes that they have out there today, I have no fear, no concern that it won't hold. And even if it didn't, this camera weighs nothing. And it has a wire on the back that connects it, right? So if it were to break loose and it were to just dangle around there, it's not heavy enough that it's going to damage anything. And when you notice it, which I would think it'd be pretty soon, uh, you could just go ahead and, and put a different, stronger double-sided tape. And by the way, if you decide to do that, don't cut corners on the double-sided tape. Go way overboard. You know, get the kind that'll hold down like 15 pounds or something. You know, why not? Then you'll never have to mess with it. I did it on my Toyota Tundra and it works perfectly. So, what about the sensor? Probably the biggest question I get because not a lot of people go for the front facing camera, but everybody has that TSS sensor. You know, that thing that's behind the oval Toyota emblem here. Mine, and all of them, has been relocated, right? It can't be here because it won't fit. There's nowhere to put it. So it's relocated right down here, right behind this shiny area. And this shiny area is the garnish. This is the garnish. It's just a little piece, about yay big, that snaps in there over the TSS sensor. Not a big deal. You can find these all over the web right now. and They have come down to a more reasonable price. I think uh, a lot of companies were really trying to gouge on these uh, because I saw them for as high as $500. It's a $50 part and that's probably high. That's what I paid for mine about two years ago when I thought I was going to put it on the insert that I had on my 2018, which by the way, I never did and never had any trouble. So do you even need it then? 
Well, it depends. Depends on where you live. You know, where I live, it's dry. It hardly ever rains. We don't get snow and ice and that. You know, and I'm not running the truck off road in mud all the time. And that's really what this is for. It's to keep stuff from getting in there and caking around that TSS sensor. Because obviously, if there's anything in front of the sensor, it's going to do its job and it's going to react, right? So you put this on so that stuff will cake on here. The sensor's still going to react. If it can't see, then it's going to alert you that something's in front of the truck, even if it's a layer of mud, right? But this makes it easier. You can just come out here, wipe that off, and then it'll be gone, right? No big deal. Whereas if you don't have it in, it's going to get behind the grill, caked all around the sensor, and, and then it's going to be a real joy to clean, right? So I would say, if you're going to do this, go ahead and pick one of these up if your insert doesn't come with it. And then you won't have to worry about that. Just make your life a little bit easier. Unless you live in a climate like I do, where it's probably irrelevant. Um, as far as position of that sensor, I know people have come on and said that they've done this and then they've had errors. Errors that something's wrong with the sensor. You know, most times I would attribute that to the installer, not the system. I've done two of these so far and I've had no problems. I always make sure that I do it right and I always make sure that there are no obstacles in front of this sensor, right? Now, I may have gotten a little lucky, to be honest, because originally the sensor would have been up here, behind that TRD oval emblem. Now, moving it down here is about, what, two, three inches, something like that. But my truck is lifted three and a half inches. So I moved the sensor down, and then in essence lifted the truck up, which puts the sensor right back in the area it would have been on anyway. So I may have gotten a little lucky there. There is a fix. A lot of people have told me that they've had problems with the sensor. They took it into the dealer and the dealer puts washers on the bottom of the sensor, the two screws or whatever it is down here on the bottom, to reorient the sensor, to point it up a little bit. And that has solved the trouble. Now, I hope they didn't pay a lot of money to do that. Certainly, if you've done this install yourself, you could surely put some washers behind there, put the nut on and be done with it. That's what I would suggest doing if, if you go ahead and do this mod and have some sort of an error message that the sensor is malfunctioning or it just works all the time because it's not seeing properly. Now, the one other thing that I'll mention about this is people putting stuff in front of the sensor, right? I mean, when the sensor's up here, it probably doesn't matter as much if you've got an aftermarket bumper with some kind of a bar down here, right? But when you go to the TRD Pro Style Grill uh, insert and you move the sensor down here, now you're, you're, you're changing its field of vision, right? And if you've got a bowl bar or a brush guard or something running right across the front of your truck here, it's going to pick that up. I mean, it's doing what it's supposed to do. It's seeing something in front of it and it's telling you there's an obstacle. It doesn't know that it's just your bumper, right? It just sees what's there and it is working the way it's supposed to. So be cognizant of that, I guess, that if you do this and you have something down here in front of that sensor, it is going to pick it up. It is going to give you messages that either there's a malfunction or it's seeing something, but it's just doing what it's supposed to do, right? So anyway, I just wanted to get on here, talk about that a little bit. I would highly recommend, if you're going to do something like this, that you go with the aftermarket third party um, and don't pay the kind of money that these cost. You know, you're going to pay anywhere, I think now, there's somewhere between four and 600 bucks for this insert. You certainly don't need to do that. The aftermarket ones look identical and they should work just fine. I've had a couple of them myself. I never had any problems with either one. Save yourself some money. The only one that's going to know is you. Anyway, I just wanted to get on here, kind of talk about that a little bit because I get periodic questions about, you know, malfunctions or how does it work or what if. So there you go. Leave a comment down below. Let me know if you've done this insert, if you've had any issues and what the resolution is for you or was for you, maybe it'll help somebody else out. Also, real quick, if you haven't before and you're interested, check out my other channel. It is Rob Motive JT, all about my 2020 Jeep Gladiator. 
Don't forget to click that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any upcoming videos. And do me a favor, smash that subscribe button on the way out. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there. Bye.